I transmigrated as a cannon fodder supporting character. In order to get close to the male lead, I disguised myself as a man and sneaked into the male dormitory. According to the plot, I would be ostracized and suppressed to death by his admirers because I peeped at the male lead taking a bath. Unexpectedly, the male lead fell in love with me and changed his sexual preference. What? Why is the plot not following the routine? Ding! Wisnavel reminds you to click the subscribe button in the bottom right corner to read the complete novel. Inside the male dormitory. The male lead, Merlin Hall, had just finished taking a shower and casually put on a pair of shorts before coming out. He was holding a towel in his hand, wiping his hair. The sexy and alluring lines of his exposed abdominal muscles made him a top-notch male. Click. I hid under the covers and pressed the camera on my phone, taking pictures. The sound of the shutter was loud enough for anyone but a deaf person to hear. Recalling the scene of my failed attempt to peep at him taking a bath on the first day, my heart still ached. At that time, I was hiding outside the bathroom and peeping. I thought that with the cleverness and alertness of the male lead Merlin Hall, he would immediately discover me, a dark peeper. But I didn't expect that I had seen him all, and he didn't notice it. There was no other choice, since peeping didn't work, I had to switch to secretly taking pictures. I hoped that the male lead would immediately label me as a pervert and straighten out the twisted plot. Merlin Hall heard the sound and paused in his hair-drying motion. He took big strides towards my bed. What the hell are you doing? He snatched my phone. Give it back to me. I pretended to be flustered and tried to snatch the phone back. Merlin looked a bit displeased, reaching out to lift my blanket, a hint of malice flashed in his eyes. If you like taking pictures so much, let me take one for you. No, I don't like taking pictures. It's not yet time in the plot to reveal my gender, so I dare not let him discover my identity. Merlin was stronger than me, and he immediately pulled away the blanket, pretending to lift my clothes. Merlin, I'm sorry, I won't dare to take pictures of you anymore. I was so nervous that my blood boiled, my hands trembled, and I held his hand tightly, refusing to let him lift my clothes. His body stiffened for a moment, and he immediately shook off my hand. Next time, I'll strip you naked and take pictures. Merlin warned in a low voice. No, I won't dare. I shivered. I was afraid that the male lead would really strip me naked, so I didn't dare to secretly take pictures of him anymore. I had to find another way to straighten out the plot. Kathy Bell, are you going to the cafeteria? My other two roommates, Travis and Samson, called me. I have something to do, you guys go ahead. I sat at the desk, pretending to be doing homework. There was only me left in the dormitory, and my silent heart began to stir. Carefully, I got up and walked to Merlin's wardrobe, opened the closet door, took a deep breath, and bent down to look for something. Finally, in the corner of the wardrobe, I found a stack of clean and neatly folded underwear. I grabbed the pile of intimate clothes with a sense of resignation, ready to hide them in my bed. When Merlin discovered that his things were missing and found his missing things from my bed, my reputation as a pervert will definitely be secured. Just as I put the pile of clothes on my bed, the door of the dormitory suddenly pushed open, and Merlin walked in. I panicked, hurriedly pulled the blanket to cover the pile of things. Why do you look so guilty, what are you up to? Merlin looked at me with teasing eyes. Nothing, I'm not doing anything. I pretended to be guilty and stood in front of the bed, fearing that he would see the things I hid on the bed. He obviously didn't believe me. He reached over me and lifted the blanket, revealing a slightly messy pile of clothes in his line of sight. I secretly glanced at him, seeing his face freeze for a moment, and then after a while, he reacted. Veins bulged on his forehead, and his face showed suppressed anger. I was taken aback and quickly tried to escape. Why are you running? Merlin grabbed the back of my collar and forcibly pulled me back. Merlin, I'm sorry, I was wrong, I won't do it again. I immediately pleaded for mercy at the right time. I just wanted a pervert label, I didn't want to be beaten up by the male lead. You re afraid now? His face turned cold. He lifted his hand and pinched my chin, the force was so strong that it was somewhat hot and painful. Sorry, I won't do it again. I was scared, my heart tightened, and tears uncontrollably flowed out. Tisk, why are you crying like a woman? 
His tone was teasing and mocking, his finger wiping away the tears on my face. My face stung, and I became even more afraid. So sorry. I won't do it again. I finally succeeded in obtaining the title of pervert from the male lead. But the reality is a bit different from the original plot. The only person who calls me a pervert is Merlin Hall. Little pervert, go buy breakfast for me. He commanded me while lying in bed. I wanted to sleep in on the weekend, but he tortured me, so I reluctantly got up. On the way to buy breakfast, I ran into the female lead, Effie Foster, the young miss of the Foster family and the male lead's number one fan. Since she was young, Effie Foster has liked the male lead and has bravely pursued him with great enthusiasm. From annoyance to attraction, the male lead has become unable to resist falling in love with her, and they eventually get married. Currently, the male lead is very annoyed with the female lead, but Effie persists in pursuing him and constantly looks for opportunities to get close to him. Hey, you and Merlin are roommates, right? Effie Foster called out to me. Yes. I nodded. I brought breakfast for Merlin. Can you help me deliver it to him? I felt relieved that I didn't have to go out to buy breakfast. Sure, I immediately took the breakfast from her hands. I will definitely tell Merlin that all this breakfast is a gesture of affection from Miss Foster. Yuri smart, Effie nodded in satisfaction. I brought the breakfast to the dormitory, and Merlin had already gotten up and finished washing up. When he saw the sumptuous breakfast on the table, his eyebrows raised slightly. Not bad, I'll leave breakfast to you from now on. I silently watched him finish breakfast, and then I lightly delivered the fatal blow. The breakfast was brought by Miss Foster, and what you ate must be her tender love for you. It must be delicious and sweet, right? His face instantly darkened, and his expression was as if he had eaten a pile of shit. I laughed wildly in my heart, almost choking from holding back my laughter. When you're too happy, you invite sorrow. I angered Merlin, and this guy intensified his enslavement of me. I was forced to become his lackey. On the basketball court, Merlin was happily playing while enjoying the cheers and praises from everyone. Meanwhile, I was miserable, carrying a towel and a bottle of water, ready to serve him at any moment, standing by the court. Go, Merlin. Yuri so handsome, Merlin. I love you, Merlin. Effie cheered for Merlin with a megaphone, her excited voice echoing throughout the basketball court. After the basketball game ended, all the girls rushed up, vying to bring water and towels to Merlin. He walked through the crowd expressionlessly, heading towards me with a deep gaze, his eyes like knives slashing at me. I leisurely reclined on a chair, feeling a chill from his gaze, and immediately got up to meet him. Are you thirsty, Merlin? Have some water. I grinned as I handed him the water. A mocking laugh was his answer. I knew something was not right and immediately used the towel to wipe the sweat off him. Look at this damn weather, it's making our Merlin all sweaty. Let me wipe it for you. He raised his head and took a gulp of water. I saw sweat dripping down his neck and I raised my tiptoes slightly to wipe it off. But just after a couple of wipes, Merlin pushed me away as if he had been startled. Caught off guard, I stumbled backward a few steps. Ah. I exclaimed, watching as I was about to fall, but a dark figure flashed before my eyes. Merlin held onto my waist, and instinctively, I reached out to hold onto him. Why did you push me? I asked angrily. Why did you touch my Adam's apple? Merlin gritted his teeth and asked. I didn't. I explained. I don't like men. Merlin lowered his voice and warned me quietly in my ear. Don't waste your efforts anymore. Thanks for the reminder. The photo of Merlin hugging me was posted on the campus forum. Case salt, I know a little lip reading. That day, Merlin told Kathy that he doesn't like men and asked him not to waste his efforts again. In order to understand what Merlin said, I learned lip reading. It's exactly as the person above said. Most of the comments on the forum were insults towards me, but there were also a small number of comments shipping us as a couple. The innocent and cute yuke and the cold and arrogant Seme, it's so fun to ship them. Over the years, Merlin has rejected countless beautiful girls. Now it seems that it's probably because he's not interested in women. To be honest, Kathy Bell is quite good looking. If Merlin really likes him, it's not that surprising. 
what the hell are they talking about? This is a world of romance, and the male lead is definitely a heterosexual. But after that, Merlin's attitude towards me suddenly became cold. It seemed like he was avoiding suspicion, he no longer interacted with me, and his indifferent attitude made it seem like he had changed. In the original plot, the male lead despised the female supporting character and didn't even spare her a glance. Now the situation seems to coincide with the original plot. Regardless, the plot is back on track. Which is a good thing. Now all that's left is for my gender to be revealed, Merlin and the female lead will seek revenge on me, I will be expelled from school, die tragically on the street, and return to the original world. But now a new trouble has arisen. The female lead, Effie, saw the shipping posts on the campus forum and came with people to question me. I explained it to her, but she didn't believe me. She threatened me to help her get together with Merlin, and only then would she let me go. Tonight, Effie has prepared a grand confession at the Beyond restaurant, and she threatened me to bring Merlin there. I mustered up the courage to find Merlin myself, acting shamelessly and cute, and finally reluctantly convinced him to have dinner with me. I tricked Merlin into going to the restaurant and brought him to the private room that Effie had booked in advance. As soon as we entered the room, we saw many pink helium balloons floating on the ceiling, a heart-shaped decoration on the wall, fresh red roses placed around, and a table already set with exquisite candles, emitting a hint of romance amidst the cheesy atmosphere. I thought he would get angry, but instead he hesitated for a moment, his brows lowered, lost in thought. Looking at his mysterious aura, I suddenly felt a bit anxious and immediately wanted to run away. Merlin, I need to use the restroom. I made up an excuse to escape. He looked up at me, his expression somewhat strange. Go ahead, do I need to escort you? I felt that something was off with him, so I quickly got up and left. But just as I stepped out of the private room, I received a call from Effie. Hey, Effie, I brought Merlin to the private room. When are you coming over? I have something urgent and can't make it there. Her voice sounded a bit panicked. Don't you dare tell Merlin that I stood him up. Just say that you invited him to dinner, but don't let the cat out of the bag. After saying that, Effie immediately hung up, leaving me standing there wanting to curse. I invited Merlin to a candlelight dinner? What the hell was she saying? Maybe I should just quietly slip away? As I was about to leave, a waiter pushed a cake cart towards us. The door to the private room was pushed open, and Merlin looked up and met my gaze. Hold on, Merlin called out to me. The most conspicuous place on the cake was a small heart-shaped box. He reached out and opened the box, revealing a shiny and delicate ring inside. I saw that his ears seemed to suddenly turn red. He played with the ring in his hand and casually put it on his finger, a perfect fit. The air seemed to stand still, and I became even more anxious. Merlin, I can't take it anymore. I'm leaving. I said in a hurry. He suddenly looked up, and he reached out and pulled me into his arms, holding me tightly. I was taken aback, and I heard him whisper softly in my ear. Let's get this straight, I'm on top and there's no room for negotiation. I struggled to push him away, but he held me even tighter. Don't make a scene, behave yourself. He said in a hoarse voice. I won't pursue the fact that you peeped on me while I was showering or that you hid my personal belongings. From now on, you're not allowed to secretly do these things anymore. Now that I've agreed to be with you, you can openly express your desires. But don't be too impatient, let's start with a kiss, and we can do other things later." As he spoke, he leaned down and kissed my lips forcefully and urgently, as if he couldn't wait to devour me. What happened to not being too impatient? The air was stolen away, and my mind quickly became dizzy. Unable to think straight. 